It's been a bit of a whirlwind, a twister of emotions, projects, and stress. But beyond that, the people, our families, and the friendships that we said goodbye to, that's been hard. And really, it's not goodbye in the sailboat life, it's see you later. The winds are always blowing, we plan to be on the move, so I know our paths will cross again. In today's episode, we share the projects, the provisions, satellite communications, and the medical preparations we've made for our coming passage across the Gulf of Mexico. Hope you enjoy. Duck box time. Once we clear up this duck box, everything we own will be on cadence. How's that feel? Crazy. It feels a little crazy, it does. Let's see what's in here, come on over. Now we have a little, little swim thing. A bucket with stuff we probably don't need. And this. Okay. All right. So, we, uh, that's it. We gotta find a place for these things on the boat and we're done. What do you think? Let's get it done. It's time to go. for us so we don't have to assemble it good stuff 45 pounds ah, it's gonna be good we're uh, installing the new anchor got the mantis m2 and uh, new 100 feet of chain and we have the same old 180 feet of road so we're good with that oh look at muscles here 45 pounds. Muscles. All right, let's get this uh, installed here. That's it. That's what you sleep on right there, that one little peg. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. It had plenty of clearance. So let's talk about safety. <laughs> Let's do it. Take it away, Johnny. <laughs> Let's do it, Matt. All right, so we're not going to spend a lot of time here. Three parts of safety in our safety gear. Um, staying on the boat. Staying on the boat. General <laughs> safety gear. And then the O oh category. Mm. Biggest one, just stay on the boat, right? <laughs> so we've, That's what all this is. We did a video a few months back on our safe, stay on the boat category. So we won't do a lot of time there. We start with our offshore life vests. Most importantly, yes, they inflate and have a lot of buoyancy, but they have the tethers built in. Speaking of tethers, we do have the quick release tethers that we can use with our jack lines to go up to the front of the boat. That's good. Keeps you on the boat. And now, kind of, I think I called it the random category, but mainly it's communications and safety at night. What do we have? Well, we have flashlights, headlamps. We have a personal locator beacon, a man overboard bracelet and we bought the Iridium Go which is a satellite uh, communicator that allows us to text and receive calls from people we know on land. For sure we love these little flashlights not because they're great but because you can put them all over the place if you just need to grab something and see what's happening real quick at nighttime we can see the sails you know that's really cool and the headlamps we like because they do have a red light so that we don't blind our night vision and uh, they're also good when you're trying to sew and it's dark outside. The personal locator beacon actually has an EPIRB um, feature. So if it uh, gets submerged in water, it will beacon out to the SOS service. We have an SOS service and I don't remember all the details there. You set it up. 
That was a week and a half ago. I've slept a lot since then. <laughs> it, it's an SOS service, and um, they'll notify the proper SOS folks. And the Redium Go also has a little SOS feature. It's also a subscription service for the SOS, and they will contact first a list of emergency contacts just to confirm that this could be us where we are based on the GPS. Um, this is also a safety feature, and the main safety feature, we chose this over a Garmin, which is much simpler and really great, or even a Zolio, which my friend yes. has, and it's great too. <clears throat> the one feature that gave this a, a little more safety for us was <clears throat> it get it gets data from the satellites and you can update your weather forecast and your wind predictions. So that's that was important for us as a safety feature. Yeah. So the ACR is registered. It's a beacon registration with NOAA.gov. Um, so it's registered directly with NOAA. Cool. So the cute little bracelet that we called earlier. <laughs> it's like watch, bracelet, what do you call that? It looks like a watch. Um, this is an extra add-on that connects with this. Actually, Olivia will wear this if it gets, I believe, 30 meters from the actual device, then it's going to set an alarm to let us know there's a man overboard and we'll be able to track the GPS of this wristwatch. So if we have a man overboard, the biggest problem is finding them. They're just a bobbing head out in the sea of six foot waves. This could give us a better chance of rescuing someone. And finally, the oh shit category. This is when things go real bad. Uh, we won't go through everything, but just a few highlighted pieces. So we have these uh, wooden pegs or wooden cones, and they can be used to like jam into a seacock to stop a leak. Uh, same with the little Nerf ball. You can put it in the seacock if there's a hole. Keep water out of the boat. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> uh, and then also lots of duct tape to do the same thing. We can close things off. We could wrap up a hose if it leaks. Um, and then a dry bag with our, <clears throat> it's our ditch bag. We have it full of all kinds of little devices, which we're not gonna go through, but signaling devices, flares, um, extra water, a, a day's worth of protein, and um, just a few safety first aid items in case we need a rescue. Never. have to test that 24 We hope period. we never have to use any of the safety gear or medications or anything that we've purchased. It's just in case. Back to the projects. Let's go. Wait, we can't hear you! Ah, uh, what you doing? defrosting the fridge. It's on my list of things to do before we take off. Uh, so what you got? Big old ice chunks here? Yeah, these came off the, from around the freezer. How long has it been since the last time? Maybe three months. Four more? Three or four. It was Back in the Port Christmas. Aransas, the Christmas trip? Probably Christmas. And what's, she, what's little Yoda doing? Crying, crying, and crying because she wants me to hold her instead of work. Why aren't you working, dog? Hmm? She says, I am. I'm helping mom. Today we're going to get a little uh, stainless steel work done. Small little project. I want to support this front bimini. It gives rain protection for the companion way, so when it's raining, I can open it up and get, still get fresh air in. And it holds up the, the Isinglass, which is a complete windshield. But what I want to do is stiffen it up a bit. <clears throat> so I bought these stainless steel tubes, and we're going to install these as bracing on this part of the bimini. Ultimately, the idea is I'm going to brace it here and forward so that it can um, stay tight and hold, you know, the next phase of our solar. Okay, we figured it's a good time to get away from the dock, get away from the projects, and head out and do a little sailing, so 
It's a beautiful day. By the time you watch this, we will be crossing the Gulf of Mexico. So wish us luck on there. And um, we're out sailing today with some friends. Um, they're in a power boat. They're going to meet us and anchor up tonight. Um, their son, Parker, is with us. And he's actually going to crew with us across the Gulf. So we're showing him uh, some of the ropes and uh, just kind of showing him how to sail. He's doing a great job. Doing a great job. Let's, uh, how about we cue up a little music? And then we look at some sailing footage. How's that? Hey, Parker, say hi. Hi. This is Parker. That's Eric's son. We'll, we'll show you Eric in a little bit. Find out a little more about Parker. You want to ask him any questions? Can I you... thought you were going to ask the questions. <laughs> okay, Parker. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. What was the questions we were going to ask him? Oh, how's the sailing? What do you think? Yeah, kind of breezy, but I like it. Yeah, what do you like about it? Uh, how simple it is. Oh, yes. Cool, cool. And so, do you have any sailing experience? I think he's a natural, and yes, I'm going to be seasick the whole time, I think. <laughs> we know how I do. <laughs> yes, we do. What about you? Are you still nervous? Aww. Are you still nervous? Yeah. So nervous. Man, I think the last three episodes or so, we've tried this mainsail, and I hate it so much, I just can't wait. I think Precision Sail is bringing our new sails at the end of this week. So I'm excited to get those. And I mean, look at this, the boat's balanced. I'm not even touching the wheel, it's not autopilot. It's just boom, everything's going really good. I'm ready to drop the new Mantis. We're gonna drop the new Mantis and uh, see how she holds. Thank you, Philip, for the great anchor. If you see this episode, um, we'll find out how she holds here in a little bit. I have no doubt it's gonna be great. That's about it. I guess we'll catch up with you at the anchorage drop the hook but we won't record that you've seen that before matter of fact here's an episode the first time we anchored how was the sale now that we're at anchor how's it feel it's good it's yeah. all good it's all good and uh, are you glad to be back at the anchors here or you want to get back out there oh I'd love to get back out there yeah me too man all the way and you said that guy was last. Oh, he sits here. He just comes over and sits there. Under it? On top. Yeah, he holds it in. Oh, on top? Just on top. Just like that. All the way? Yeah, right there. Right on that black. That's where that black oh, is. Oh, he sat right there. Okay. Yeah, then you tighten him down. Okay, got it, got it. It's time to get this mainsail down. We've been waiting for a day where there's uh, no wind. Kind of hard to put down when there's wind to take down. Uh, it's actually thunderstorming today, but it's a, a drop in the precipitation. And we don't have a replacement sail yet. Um, we ordered from Precision Sales back at the end of February, early, I mean, end of March, early April. It's been about 10 weeks, eight to 10 weeks. And uh, we really don't know when the sails are coming in. We've been told they've shipped them, but when we call like to get a tracking number and they can't give us any information. So we're just hoping they're coming in. <laughs> I'll reserve my judgment 
on this experience with ordering these new sails until we actually get them. We get them, they come in earlier than expected, we'll be good even though we're about two weeks delayed. It's just kind of hard to schedule with crew. I mean, it's hard to, you know, make all the plans and schedule when you don't know when you're gonna have your sails. We're supposed to have them June 1st and we won't rant until later. For now, we're getting this main sail down to spare you of all that. And then uh, once we get the new cells in, we'll show them off to you. And hopefully we're really happy with them. Hopefully so. All right, so we, um, okay, we just got back from the grocery store. I say we, Nancy just got back and we're totally almost 80% provisioned up for the trip. It's a trip across the Gulf plus yeah, plus two more days on a another offshore trip. We're really piggybacking two offshore trips together so we can get around the East Coast. Nance, what's the stress with this mess? This boat is piled full of stuff. <laughs> like, Are we ready to I... roll? Is this ready to roll? No, this is everything except for produce. Um, I wanted to get the produce right before we leave, so... Lots of snacks. We've got uh, two crew members coming on board with us, so we had to buy some extra food. Um, the poor guy at the grocery store, I pulled up with my cart and he his eyes were like, <laughs> and his only question was, how did you make all this fit in that basket? <laughs> well, I had to get it all. So. What kind of things did we buy for provisioning? <sighs> Chips. <laughs> Just a what? That's all you can see right here, chips. We've got uh, peanut butter, honey, Nutella for Olivia, lots of pinto beans, there's black beans, there's tuna, chips and salsa, coffee, beer. <laughs> oh yeah. You don't get this anywhere but Galveston Bay. Oh, this is absolutely the best. Uh, I have never bought five dozen eggs, but this is what five dozen eggs looks like. Um, four loaves of bread, trail mix, beef jerky, bagels, shrimp, salmon, lots of lunch meat. All right, so we have a menu. Nancy prepared a, like a, a plan, at least a, a dinner plan. And so I guess we could share that on the blog. We'll put a link there. And uh, why the plan? What's the plan? Why, why do we have to put a menu? Why can't we just eat whatever we want, like a bunch of bachelors? Because if it's not on the boat, you can't eat it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you have to have stuff on board, so you make a plan. <laughs> yeah, and I think also, then we don't have to think. We were out there. It's already written down. We don't have to think about it, right? Yeah. We can prepare the things that need to be prepared. Uh, let's take a look at all this food. I can't wait to eat it. So, Olivia, too. She was like, can I have the... No, it's for next week. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a break from those projects and let's talk about healthcare on the water, essentially. We have three categories to our kit. We did need a doctor, obviously, for that third category. Right, and we went to three different doctors before we found one that actually understood that we're going offshore for five plus days, and if something happens or if you need some type of prescription medication, it's better to have it on board than to try to make it to your destination and things get worse or kind of escalate. The doctor I went to, she gave me a list of the medications she gave me and gave me um, ideas of what you would use them for. Um, and of course, you know, if we had access to our phone or whatever, I could definitely give her a call and she would, you know, definitely guide us on that. But those medications that did require prescription, we have a full list and what they're used for. It's kind of a general vibe we got from the three doctors. This one just simply wanted to be more helpful. It wasn't just another appointment. It's not every day they have a patient come in and say, I have a sailboat and I'm sailing away forever, you know, kind of thing. So it was just the lack of, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin, I think was more um, where they were coming yeah. from. Um, so yeah, first aid, very basic. And so obviously we're not medical professionals, we're not pros, we're just sharing what we have and we're open to comments questions, other ideas. This is not everything, but this is kind of just general. We've got our antiseptics here, antiseptics, you know, wound care, um, all the way from saline to harsh alcohol to just cutting bacteria when we're eating and going about the day, you know, and uh, 
bandages, um, band-aids, we have gauze pads, the, the whole nine yards for wound care, um, as well as gauze wraps, and little bitty scissors, scissors, tapes, <laughs> even some minor like uh, butterfly stitches things, whatever those are. So we also have obviously a blood pressure um, monitor if we're out there with a chest pain. We want to know if it was the spicy tuna <laughs> or if we're really needing an SOS, right? So remedies, what do we have? Uh, remedies, I would consider those to be like things for seasickness. Of course, we all know that Nancy gets seasick and I try, I'm trying really hard to prevent that this time. So I have things like natural calm, ginger root. Um, I found this anti-nausea ginger gum. I'm going to try that out this time and these ginger chews. So I'm going to try those out. Um, and of course the prescription medications, the patches. Remedies would be like Tums in case Matt gets heartburn. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Advil. I never get heartburn, but in case, I suppose. <laughs> Advil, Excedrin, Tylenol. Finally, the last category, uh, the prescriptions. Just in general, we're not going to go into detail because, again, we don't want to give bad advice or wrong advice. But we have some basic stuff. Um, I have prescriptions for nausea, vomiting, and then, of course, the patches that go behind your ears are prescription for nausea. And then just a couple of different antibiotics. If I have something of a respiratory, if we get a cut that, you know, the antibacterial uh, antibiotic <laughs> ointments aren't helping with, um, sinus, whatever, she kind of laid out what, which antibiotic would do for what. So we have about three antibiotics that we could choose from depending on what was going on. Cool. Before we get to the next project, one of the prescriptions I really favor and like a lot, I've never used it, but we have used it. Um, is a anti-vomiting so even if you do get seasick it keeps fluids in that's the main for my right. my biggest concern safety offshore is if it's summertime it's hot and you're seasick you're losing fluids now we have a serious problem with dehydration so we do have one of the prescriptions that really focuses on you're still going to be sick but it's going to keep the fluids in yeah. all right so let's move back to some projects here we go almost there Thanks for watching today's episode. I'm working on next week's episode and we're one day away from departing. Only thing left to do is get our new cells, receive them in the mail. Just waiting on those and then we'll be crossing the Gulf. We'll see you next week. Hopefully we have a safe crossing and we can't wait to share it with you. It's time to take a little break. And so we want to talk a little bit about safety. Take it away, Matt. Is that what you want me to do? <laughs> Okay, Nancy, next category. Next up is, oh. <laughs> For me, the more motivated I am to do it, and it actually gets done, it doesn't just sit around. Uh-huh, get it done. My boat's a mess. Get it done. Oh, it's a mess? Who's gonna clean that? Who's gonna clean that mess? Not me. That, 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 that. The jobless girl. Right. <laughs> All right. Watch this, this is fun. Flip over. Oh, it's recording.